I'm going to talk a little bit about open search today. My name is Kyle. I'm a senior developer advocate for open search at AWS, and I'm exclusively dedicated to open search. Um, so what I'd like to do today is just first bring in a definition of what open search is. Open search is a community driven. We take our marching orders from the community. Open source search and analytics suite derived from the Apache 2 licensed Elasticsearch 7102 and Kibana 7102. It consists of a search engine daemon, open search, which is analogous to Elasticsearch, a visualization and user interface, open search dashboards, which is analogous to um, Kibana, as well as uh, functionality adding tools and plugins. Now, I've said a lot in this slide. Let's go and talk a little bit about the history and why this has come about and why you may have heard of it and what's happening. So Elasticsearch and Kibana existed for a long time and they were open source licensed. Um, they had a lot of use cases and um, you know, our customers at Amazon and AWS, um, internal users as well, kind of found a number of different things that they wanted to add to this open source core. And that uh, came in the way of plugins and tools. Uh, these were all open source uh, and we released them together with the open source core of Elasticsearch and Kibana to create open distro for Elasticsearch. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit. That happened in 2019. Let's go to January of 2020. Um, where there was a license change. The creators of Elasticsearch and Kibana decided to take uh, what was Apache 2 licensed and convert it to SSPL and Elastic license, which those are not open source licenses. So the decision was made to fork Elasticsearch and Kibana. So what happens then with open distro for Elasticsearch? So uh, at that point, that project was put into maintenance mode and then those plugins and tools were forked to work with this new project. And together that formed OpenSearch. Now I say this because OpenSearch is more than one thing. It's a collection of things, it's a whole project that has a number of different aspects to it. Now, what's important to that is that all of these pieces are licensed as Apache V2. Uh, this allows you to use, modify, extend, and uh, monetize, resell, make part of your own product or service. And we have that consistently across OpenSearch and OpenSearch dashboards, all plugins and all tools. So, what do you do with open search? So one of the first things you might think of is text search, and it's great at that. So it allows you to query your data uh, in a more natural way, sort that data and how it's relevant to you, and you're able to have control over it. And then as well, um, when you start thinking about how you bring data into it, you are able to stream data into open search. It works great with high volumes, and it can be able to query that in near real time. Of course, it's distributed, so it can work across many different um, nodes and then have uh, a scale out architecture. And then you're able to analyze that data that you've brought in. So you can look at it in visualization, statistics, and there's lots of tools that allow you to uh, do further analysis. Today though, I wanna talk specifically about a um, use case where you're taking open search and you are using it to analyze um, the outputs of testing and build processes. So in a complex piece of software, you have a number of different repos and dependencies that you're building and testing oftentimes many times a day. Now, if you're trying to understand what's going on with that, you have a big challenge ahead of you because you have to take in all that data and then understand what's happening there. If you were to go to every single process and look at those different processes and try to understand what would happen, it would take you forever. So you can take all that information, the output of these processes and put them into open search. Um, from there, you can start looking at how you can search through that data, just looking for specific keywords as an example, or you can aggregate that data and get a higher level view without having to view each individual document. You can then of course take that data and visualize it in a way that will help you understand things without having to page through even the aggregations and present it in a human understandable chart. It's colorful and can be presented to people without a lot of context. And you know, we can even do further things. So one of the things open search has is built-in anomaly detection. So when you are uh, bringing data in, it can actually look for data that looks out of the ordinary. So for example, if you typically get 50 warnings in a uh, given session of build, and suddenly you're getting 65, 70, 80, uh, you don't have to manually set a, a threshold that will then uh, you know, look for that area. But what you can also do is set up an alert. So let's say that you set a threshold or an example where you're using your detector, you get anomalous data, you can have it make an alert and then send off, uh, say a Slack message or an email. So it really is useful in understanding this high volume data and that's where open search really shines. So um, if you're interested in this and you wanna get involved, go ahead and go over to opensearch.org where you can download or get more information. 
Um, and if you want to contribute, we're on GitHub. We love contributions. Um, so you can visit us on GitHub, github.com slash open search dash project. You can see all the different repos.